What is going on guys? We are back with another video today and we're doing our final rebuild of a fantasy draft team. The perfect fantasy draft team, if you will. A uh, team that we made doing a guide uh, on the updated rosters with rookie devs that I made recently enough. Maybe it's in the description. Maybe it'll be at the end of the video. Either way, it's easy to find. It's one of my most recent videos. It's got like a purple thumbnail kind of... <laughs> I'm just like, you know, someone, hey, what's your YouTube channel? Oh, uh, uh, here it is. Uh, let me just put it in, you know. <laughs> but, of course, this is what the team looks like. Spoiler alert coming up. Of course, a team that I normally wouldn't draft, but I decided because you can't redraft, I would let you guys know the information of when players kind of go, the rough value, because I will say this uh, guide was probably the most random that couldn't really be controlled for a lot of positions, a lot of players, but... For the most part, it should be rather accurate. And I was like, you know what? You can't technically, you know, in our normal guides, we would keep retrying until we found, you know, like a hey, pick 17, 16, 18, whatever. But since you couldn't do that, I was like, you know what? I'm going to take the best player, I think, at each position, which is why we ended up with Joe Burrow and a superstar lineman. Of course, we know that you cannot physically get, and I'll probably say it a bunch of times, a superstar development trait lineman without drafting them so of course in the fantasy draft or a rookie draft if you want a guy with abilities at lineman which is very valuable you're gonna have to draft it of course it's also gonna allow him to develop quicker we have a pretty decent line i would say our left tackle and our right tackle positions are great right guard salier is actually a bit underrated like he's actually decent here considering his low overall and then i think jurgens is actually not bad at all either right yeah, I mean, they, they're a little developing. You know, they need some development, but they're pretty good, of course. Once again, all these devs were set before we actually drafted, so there was no, you know, once I think I used to do it where I would just draft whoever and then add the devs, which is just, like, completely busted. It, like, defeats the purpose. You might as well just be adding devs you want anytime because, obviously, the AI would take the player sooner if a guy like Brees Hall was star or superstar instead of normal. But, of course, super glitchy. We took him, I don't remember when we took him, but once again, all these players we took in fair timing, so there's no, like, deceiving, if you will. Oh, look, it's number 17 for Christian Watson. That'd be kind of an interesting number. <laughs> of course, his number in real life is pretty rough. Chase Claypool, we know in our Nighthawks franchise, not a huge fan of him, but in-game, he is supposed to be good. We just kind of have our slider set so hard in there that, you know, pretty much everyone sucks. But Tyquan Thornton, didn't really want all of our players to be tall as hell, but... 6'3", very fast. I don't know if you can pass up on that, right? Of course, Joe Burrow should be good for us in this rebuild, but as far as using, I can kind of see why maybe you wouldn't want to grab him because he's already kind of developed. He's not the most fun guy in the world. But one thing I will say for sure is how the hell is he not a superstar in X-Factor? I guarantee this is the pk -er guarantee, which I never do, and I, I don't even know if that's a thing. He's going to be better than Star Dev next Madden. Absolutely. And I'm not talking about the end of Madden. I mean at the launch of Madden, which would be very, like, contradictive of what they set him at, right? Of course, no offense. A guy that you almost always want to aim for in your uh, fantasy drafts. He's just such a freak, dude. He's super fast. Pretty damn good catching out the gate. And he's only 23. And he's, uh, once again, he's pretty tall, pretty big. Uh, defensively, we landed some really great players here, too. Marlon Humphrey may be the best cornerback in the game considering his combination of abilities deep route KO, uh, KO and short route KO make him almost impossible to throw against obviously this is a, uh, a rebuild so it probably won't matter as much Jordan Davis another great player to grab a DT with uh, you know that superstar obviously huge and honestly maybe underrated in his athleticism a little bit or is his uh, I guess athletics if you will uh, his abilities inside stuff, dude. Oh my god, that's so busted. Of course, we had an, uh, Ed Oliver, Caleb Farley. When healthy in game is one of the best corners you could ask for. So he's so blazing fast and he's got decent catching. And then our number three, Calvin Josie. We have some other great players like Tariq uh, Wolin and all that. I almost said Cohen, obviously. Um, you know, some really good players that are really fast and solid. Same with the safeties. Nick Cross is blazing speed, 94 speed. Of course, the number is ugly, but. Honestly, I'm just the Chiefs have cucked us so much. I just just deal with it, right? And then the linebackers, obviously, super fast. I don't want to go too much more into this. As once again, if you watch the uh, precursor video to this, once the in the actual guide, you would uh, you kind of know what the team looks like. Of course, let me know in the comment section below if you've actually uh, done a fantasy draft yourself with 
the the kind of devs like obviously you don't have to use the actual like when players kind of go kind of thing but let me know if you guys use them with the updated devs that i've done or you've done your own or whatever it may be let me know in the comment section below and of course if anyone's down there if they they want to also leave a like or if you're not subscribed yet yeah, you can always subscribe all oh, that's free you can always unsub you can even turn the bell off like please don't like right you know <laughs> but of course either way if you're also not someone that's new and you've already been subbed i really appreciate your continued support or if you know you're just in general somebody that comes back to the channel i mean there's a couple of channels i'll be honest i'm i'm only human some channels i do forget to subscribe to but i watch their content every once in a while and then i'm like hey wait a minute what am i doing let me give them a sub real quick you know maybe let me leave a like on a video i'm just saying you know we didn't get our camp standout unfortunately uh, I also am going to use a CPU-generated class because I feel like the realism is quote-unquote out the door, if you will. I will obviously still be trying a realistic style rebuild where, you know, if we're making trades, we're going to try to keep it as realistic as possible. Uh, but, yeah, I know I'm kind of getting sick of the real-life class as well, especially since it's the same one every time. You know, there's not a whole lot of classes being uploaded to the community files, at least decent ones at this point of the Madden cycle, obviously. As, uh, like I said, I don't know what our uh, schedule or what is it called, our win-loss going to be for a season. But typically, if we get around, you know, at 500, considering we're at a bit of a disadvantage early on because of the youth we have and a little bit slightly lower overalls, it's usually a win. That's kind of what I'm aiming for, about mid. Well, we got a lot of stuff this week. We have, like, a tandem breakout, a regular breakout, a QB breakout. We also got this morale boost for, uh, you know, the team chemistry thing. I mean, things are kind of popping off. Also, I don't know if you guys have ever succeeded on one of these, like, AI-wise. I basically just click on this for the free XP for the, the guy that he's like, Wow, I just want to be just like that guy that doesn't know how to give the ball to the center. Oh, way. Not bad, actually. Super start of element trade for him. Uh, I mean, I'll check it because, you know, it's been a while. I, I don't know if EA's doing much updates anyways. I don't know how they would break it, but... I do want to see if, like, the game's broken, because it's it's really rare to get these dev ups for pass rushers and D linemen, so you know, the fact that we're kind of getting some is a little surprise. Oh, I thought that was him. Two tackles for a loss. I think it is two plus, right? I was, no, yeah, I think it's two plus. I mean, the fact that he had two tackles for a loss makes me think it is, but of course, TJ Watt, oh my god. You could also hold them to under 75 yards rushing, I believe, but I think the Bears are pretty much guaranteed to get 20, uh, 75 yards rushing with their scheme, so... Yeah, I, I don't know wh which one it would have been, but it seemed legit. So, we do get a lot of gems, often, uh, and sometimes you have to see if those players need contracts early on. Of course, the special teamers do, but that's kind of like the case for almost every team, Jack Fox being a superstar development trade player, if I was going to use him in a class, I definitely would. I don't, uh, you know, keep him on long term. I don't know what kickers with this ability can see the entirety of their kicking arc. That wouldn't make sense. Uh, I'd imagine it's focus kicker, which is just busted. But it makes sense that that's the ability because the other ones are little kicker ones, not punter. But a five-year twenty, Patrick Ricard. He's a fullback, but once again, you don't really have to pay anyone big named for usually four years. So. Keeping him till he's, uh, you know, 30 isn't the worst thing. And then Joey Sly, I do like the fact that he's insane kick power, which is why I would draft him in a uh, user class, in our fantasy draft user. Uh, Got to see how well he's playing, which is okay. I think I'm willing to just give him a deal. Once again, all kickers are just random. So what's the difference, right? Might as well just grab him. It's five years, 17.5. Also, Ben Mason is actually costly. I remember when we were drafting him, I was like, yeah, that guy uh, can be here till he's 30. Just sign him up. And it's like, well, maybe you don't because he's expensive. And then Kalen Barnes is a hard guy to pass on. 23 years old, but so fast. Uh, I guess I'll keep him on a three-year backup deal. The division's kind of looking insane right now. 10 and 5 for three of the teams. Of course, one of those will change. And sadly, it was us. Caleb Farley just got a speed upgrade, dude. How is it even fair? 96 speed. I think no matter what happens, everyone's going to be in of those three teams, and it appears so, as we were the worst of the three teams, as the Vikings are probably pissed, because I'd imagine if we won, they would have had it because of a tie, and of course, Channing Tindall. Yeah, blame us for you not being able to get to star. One of the easiest things to do as a linebacker at normal dev. Come on, man. Like, it's not superstar, it's regular normal to star, of course. Really good start to the season. Not that great right at the end, and kind of a little in the middle, but... 
Went with the Packers offense. We went with the 4-3 defense, so obviously not the Packers defense. As far as our actual season goes, though, uh, Joe Burrow, not bad. Yards are a little low, but touchdowns are great. Picks are decent. Completion percentage could have been better. Rushing was pretty tame, to be fair. Claypool went off. Should go to superstar. Watson and Tyquan Thornton, though. At least Thornton can't really blame, but would have loved to see more from Watson. Noah Fant, not bad. Blocking was pretty good, but once again, those are really good players. Pass rush, Nick Benito, uh, Ed Oliver, away. All pretty decent. You know, Ed Oliver and Nick Benito are the guys that matter more, though, because obviously away is already superstar because of his breakout. And unfortunately, Jordan Davis didn't really play well at all. Uh, Marlon Humphrey, five interceptions, that man. Joey Sly missing no more kicks after that contract we gave him. Lovely sub, Jack Fox. Not the greatest season, to be fair. Kick return, part return game didn't exist. Uh, MVP and all that. I don't imagine it would have been close, but uh, Josh Allen wins MVP as a Dolphin. Malik Willis was actually up there as a rookie, even. Uh, as far as our guy goes, Burrow could be a Pro Bowler. I imagine he is, right? Where, where do we see it? He is number three Pro Bowler, I believe, right? Josh Jacobs. Uh, we weren't on the list there. Wide receiver number one, Chase Claypool. That's got to be superstar. O-line uh, number seven, and I'd imagine very soon Evan Neal will be on that list. D-line nine and ten, which means that, uh, you know, away might not have been that far off. Linebacker, no, but DB number three. Not bad. And then kicker. At six, not bad, an okay season. Once again, we don't even usually get to the playoffs year one, so you know, chalk that up as already a W. Philadelphia, only one overall higher than us, and I can't imagine they're younger than us, so already caught up to the rest of the league. That's why that year one we always talk about is, you know, just getting to 500 is nice because we don't really expect to be that great year one because we aren't as good as everyone else year one. We just have way more potential. We're in for the long haul is Philadelphia gets the touchdown and the two-point. Green Bay not really looking too strong here as Philadelphia is going to continue their drive and probably put up a touchdown. They will not. There will be a chance with a minute 16 left, moving down quickly, but also losing every bit of the clock, dude. What is wrong, man? Ah, oh, man, it's so annoying. Like, you have all the time in the world with these timeouts, and we're just you just don't use them. That's the problem. Use the damn timeouts. And there's nobody on him. What a throw! And he's running! Probably should have went out and actually now we made the right call. Made the right call going for every yard possible because not going to be able to use that last timeout anyways. Unbelievable. What is the Hail Mary from the 28-yard line? Can we not, please? Joey B is kind of that guy, though. Like, how did he get that throw off? Like, that, that's insane. You have Watson. You have Thornton, who's also tall. So, now nah, we're going to have Claypool. Claypool's our guy here. Claypool's the guy. There's nobody on him. There's... Oh, that was close, dude. There was absolutely someone on him. That play is kind of busted, though. I ain't gonna lie. That If you get the time to throw it a right bumper, you... I mean, which we obviously did. Really good blocking. They brought five. I mean, that's good blocking. You have a shot of really good bait, though, attempt. He just missed it by an inch. It was an absolute dot by Burrow, and I thought this foot, dude, look at that. Uh, would it have been out? Nah, he would have been in it. Oh, he would have? Nah, he would have been in it anyways. Who is that playing coverage like that, though? Emmanuel Ogba almost just made the play of the Super Bowl. Holy crap, let's see if Joey Sly makes the kick. Does, and the team's in the divisional. Unbelievable. Year one, of course, this is, like I said, different than most teams we draft. Most teams we have, the quarterback is like some 70 overall. So having Joe Burrow is a major upgrade comparatively to all of our other, you know, fantasy draft rebuilds. Uh, what about defensively? Any performances? They crushed us. Nick Cross with two interceptions, though. Harrison Bucker had himself a game, but one missed field goal is all it takes to be remembered as, oh, just imagine you would have hit all our field goals. Of course, I'm not sure how they're upgrading Joe Burrow, but when I have a chance to upgrade, I'm going to go with strong arm because that's what he's kind of lacking. Two to deep accuracy, which is nice. Already one up and throw a power once. That's not bad. Away with a plus three to power move, which is already at 89. Jesus. Christian Harris is giving me mad Kenneth Murray vibes. He's just like, it's just crazy. Of course, Nick Cross, who's like blazing speed. Maybe he's operated in speed already. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> he has now <laughs> he absolutely has now which is i mean okay timing divisional 
Very high chance it could be someone in the division, and it is not. It would have been the ultimate literal divisional. But Seattle, 83 versus 84. I don't like Seahawks in the playoffs. Something about them. Tom Brady and Devontae Adams. Not a bad a little duo there. And because we know Tom Brady... Oh, it's snowing in Seattle here. This... I don't know if I've ever seen snow in the Seahawks stadium. This is crazy. This looks amazing. Of course, 3-0 to and 10-0. to But I, like I was about to say, we know that if you get Brady, you're getting an amazing deal. Because he comes out in like the fourth or the fifth round, and he's such a high overall. So this is a team that you would expect to be better than most year one. So not an easy task, although we're looking kind of up to it. And we're in the championship round. Hell yeah, 38 points back to back. Looking very good out here as uh, Joe Burrow versus Tom Brady. And Brady threw too many interceptions. Uh, Brees Hall, 4.3 yards per carry. Devontae Adams, all this stuff. Uh, let's see who got the interceptions. Troy Anderson, Christian Harris, and Kelvin Joseph. Joey Sly missed a kick, but that's okay because Tom Brady missed a lot of accuracy. But that, that kind of reminded me, though, like we are the Packers, so I get to talk about it. But I remember the whole lead-up of that first, uh, that, that Buccaneers versus Packers uh, playoffs, and it was like, can Tom Brady handle the cold? I was like, do you, you do realize that Tom Brady didn't play for Tampa his whole career, right? Like, you, you guys understand that, correct? Of course, change direction plus two. That's an amazing upgrade, actually. It's pretty sick. In the championship round, as quoted from Wolf of Wall Street, we ain't freaking leaving. <laughs> of course, the Giants, 12-5 and five at home again. 84 overall, 84 overall. Uh, I didn't see a quarterback there, but I seen some fun names, obviously. As on the other side, Rodgers could be playing against his former team if the Chargers win. That's, that's where he went, right, I believe, I think. I might be thinking of uh, something else. 10-7, 13-7. Nice rushing touchdown for Brees Hall, 20-14. to 14. See, the problem with our team is the defense has given up a lot of points, but the offense is also able to score a lot of points, so... Yeah, obviously, uh, we have a chance. Defense actually coming up to the call here. And a year once, is Joe Burrow that much of a difference? Because like I said, I don't remember the last time we've had a fantasy draft where we've won you know, the first Super Bowl or even come close to the first Super Bowl. Usually, it takes us a while because we're you know a team that has high potential and needs a little bit of time to get there, though. Joe Burrow killing it, though. Rushing, Brees Hall was pretty good. He had that huge rushing touchdown for how many yards? 60, 63. Taekwon Thornton with the most catches, 131 yards. Blocking, I don't really care too much. Neil, you know, who cares? Uh, defensively, pass rush has been a little inconsistent. Interceptions were down this game, but regardless, a great team win. And, I mean, Joey Sly has earned that contract, I'll tell you. That's my guy. That's my, my boo. Hey, if you got a fresh $17 million contract, <laughs> I don't care who you are, you're my boo. What? Of course, Frank Ragnow, I mean, I suppose we'll go with some agility. Okay. Jacksonville. Was that... Usually Jacksonville does draft pretty well in Sim, but I, I don't know. Mike, Micah Parsons, so that's not a bad first-round pick. Let's take a look at any dev ups we had at Chase Claypool. I kind of looked at their side. Wow, Burrow didn't go up. That's harsh, but dev up for Claypool. Defensively in the dev ups, Anderson, and that also goes to Marlon Humphrey, which is... Kind of clutch. He's going to become one of those greatest of all time type of players. Uh, did he get... Wait, don't tell me reinforcement, the one where you get, like, abilities for your teammates. When they enter the zone, this ability just... Incre okay, I was about to say, I thought it was going to be one of those, like, the... What is it called? Selfless. That's the one I was thinking of. Uh, no other dev ups, though. Troy Anderson. I mean, that's a cool little dev up, I suppose. But would have been nice to see uh, Tyndall at least join the crowd as that would have been our last normal needed to go to star or better. But regardless, it's still pretty nice. And uh, obviously, Claypool getting to superstar is one great step towards uh, you know getting these wide receivers up to speed. Uh, another short route upgrade. He's good in short route. Very solid catcher. Finally, because I was able to put my hand into it, that's what she said, uh, we actually have... You know, wide receivers that aren't just deep route only. Finally, as in, like, rebuild-wise. Obviously, this is the first season of the rebuild, so it wouldn't make any sense if it was talking about this one specifically. But here we go. Going up against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Vita Vea, AJ Terrell, Micah Parsons. That is a sick-looking defense, I must say. Micah Parsons and Vita Vea is a lone, just scary. But also AJ Terrell, who's great. 
Real question, though, is their defense or their offense going to be good enough to beat our defense? As their offense gave up some score, but they got a nice turnaround. They got a touchdown. We're down by one. Could be down by two possessions. Nope. Down by one. Down by eight. That defense, like we were talking about, looking very good here. And I think we've lost. Team's not giving up, but I think it might be too late for us to win it. Obviously, we did have the help. Tell me they're not going. <sighs> you crazy? Seven minutes in the game, and you're down by 11, sucking on offense, and you're gonna, you're not gonna go for it. I almost predetermined that, but Watson looking pretty good there. I almost predetermined it to Claypool, but didn't know if I believed in him, and gladly we went to Watson instead. Come on, Joey B. Oh my God, with this team, they're gonna punt it. 61 yards. You gotta let him do it. It's just, it's too much fun not to. Did he hit it? Let's see. Ah, he missed it. Yeah, that's going to be a GG. Wow, this team sucked it. Uh, now they're moving on the field with these, huh? I can't, like. I know it's like, nearly impossible to win it, but I just kind of want to see how close we could come. That's what she said. Uh, it's, I'm going to force this to Claypool. That's a big man. <sighs> what a try, though. Christian Watson on the interior. Fourth and four. You do have the underneath for Fant. And you got to just throw that up. What a dot. Oh, my God. He almost just sold it. Who is that that came back? Was it Taekwon? Doe? Shot. He almost just ruined the game for us. I don't know who that was, actually. Fant is open. Not an easy one. Holds on. Clock's pretty much gone. Where did the clock go, actually? Did we keep a ball in the open field and I just forgot? Of course, they're going to challenge us, whatever. Also, I don't know what kind of factor it plays in, but, like, why wouldn't you go for two here, especially when you're in a bad spot? Watson looks huge, by the way. Why not go to the same guy? Yeah, these weapons are freakly good, though. Onside kick. This would take some miracle. This would be the greatest win of all time if you actually somehow pulled it off. Oh! Okay! Oh! They, oh, well, hold on a minute here, kids. Imagine they didn't miss the field goal, dude. Perfect kick. Joey Sly, besides the miss, is a god. Did he bat that? I was wondering what happened. I was like, how? Who even recovered this? Wait, how did number one get it? No, it just became a big pile up. You gotta be crapping my shorts and then replacing them for free. Like, you, you have to be. Like, this is insane. Not that it matters, because once again, down too many possessions. I think you got to take that. Nobody else is out there as far. I don't know what just happened, but I'm going to assume the game sucks. You have this guy jumping up, and then you have Fant just like... I don't know what kind of a catch that is. He's six foot four and looks like a damn tank. And this is... This is a... Is this a dance move? That's not a catch. That's a catchy... Congrats to the Jaguars for winning their Super Bowl. <laughs> what in the world is that catch animation? Who even is their quarterback? I don't remember seeing his name at all. Kenny Pickett. Interesting. Of course, great to see him winning as a rookie. That's always fun. <laughs> what in the world was that catch animation? Of course, uh, Jamison Williams. Jamison Crowder, though. Gallup. I mean, our receivers aren't great either, to be fair. But, like, I've never seen... Devin Singletary be a good starting running back. Not that he even played that great there, but I don't even I don't even think it was possible for him to be on a winning team for Super Bowl. Of course, Joey Sly. What in the world are you doing, pal? Of course, one of them was from 61, which is kind of crazy. But that's a lot to ask for, you know? Maybe in the first or second quarter you'd have it. But that was a lot to ask for, but I still wanted to see it because that is uh, kind of liking the guy, even though he technically lost us the game there. And again, he got us the onside kick. So, I mean, you lose some, you lose nothing, you uh, you win some. That's, that's how it is. That's the saying. Kind of locked up all the guys we think we need. I can't remember any names being in here that we wanted to keep. So, I guess... Tony and Seth Williams being literal freebies, you might as well. Here we are in free agency. Not really going to see much here. Like we said, it's usually special teamers, fullbacks, maybe a running back, and then probably like one okay corner if you're trying to go that route. But I don't think it's a necessity of ours to be going for any of these types of players. So we'll maybe take a look just in case somebody loses their mind. But yeah, I don't think there's going to be anyone here for us like usual.
Yeah, Connor Williams is usually like a nice little steal for some reason. He never gets re-signed. I, I don't get it though. Like, why wouldn't you re-sign him? I wonder if the game forces certain players to be dropped because otherwise they probably could get in some contractual issues if you're re-signing all of these kind of like lesser name, hard to develop guys. But at the same time, when we every single team has over a hundred million to spend, why wouldn't you keep your kicker and punter? You know, why does that? Why do these guys go to free agency? And now this is where it's kind of tough. In a fantasy draft where you draft like us, you don't really need anything. So you almost debate trading your first round for a future pick just in case you do need someone. It's like Juan Thornton. Uh, he's actually not as good. He's, he's like similar, but not as good technically. He's just somehow tied his overall. I'm not really sure how that happened. What, what, uh, you know, what kind of upgrades is Watson getting here? Yeah, his catching is tragic. Which, I mean, in real life, seems to be true. But really, like, what do you actually draft if you're us? There's nothing to draft on the offensive side of the ball. Maybe a wide receiver, to be fair, because Watson and Thornton, I don't know. Maybe they're not starting caliber, you know? I, I mean, I would use the hell out of them. But as far as, like, the AI goes, developing them, it's not looking great so far. Defensively, you could probably replace Tyndall, but he is also pretty young, so he still has time to develop. So I guess uh, wide receiver, maybe linebacker, could always trade our draft picks for a proven guy at one of those positions, which, I mean, it almost defeats the purpose, but at the same time, if we can get them, why wouldn't I trade for someone? The guys are pretty strict with trading great players, so at the end of the day, you know, if they trade them, it's not my fault. Of course, could go Alave. I don't know what kind of value he'd have. All right, uh, it's pretty costly, but pick 31 this year, projected 29 next year, and Kendrick Green for Jamar Chase. Like, there's really just not a whole lot to do with draft picks when your team is set. Uh, also, we're able to land another team's decently high pick. I'd imagine Jamar Chase is like a fourth or a fifth round guy in a fantasy draft. Let's see, is he? I had a pretty good year for them, and oh wow, he's a late second. Jesus. I still think it's technically fair. Two first-round picks and a center that they valued at green is pretty fair. I was trying to give him Christian Watson to be legit. I think I probably will actually give him over to him, too. So we've gone full realism mode, <laughs> but we traded Christian Watson. We traded a third this and a second next year with the Vikings for their first-round pick next year as I don't think we really need a first-round pick this year, and uh, he's not actually going to start for them right away, so I feel like they're probably just going to waste Christian Watson. He'll probably be like 24 by the time he starts, because they have Robert Woods still that uh, will be their second guy. Number three will be Sky Moore, so I don't know. I feel like it's it's an okay win, so it, let's review what it cost us to get Chase Claypool. So it basically cost us a first, a third, and a second, plus Christian Watson, which... And that's a pretty good trade. That's not terrible. Also, we also lost Kendrick Green, but I don't really, you know. But yeah, it's maybe not the most realistic in the sense that we're not going to have draft picks. But as far as value goes, you know, we didn't cheese them somehow. We literally just, you know, we did our thing, which was cheesing them. All right, we're in the draft, but our first pick is in the 31st selection spot of the second round. And then our next pick is in the fourth, which is kind of crazy, but... Let's take a look at who we have. We had a center, and that center be gone. Of course, I do want this Anthony Humphrey guy if I can get him as well. So I think what we're going to do is trade down to like maybe 10 in the third round if we can. Use whatever we gain that's extra to also move back into the third, and then all that stuff should be good. Uh, Buccaneers might actually be giving us what we want here. 67 is actually a little bit closer than I would have wanted, but I would take it, obviously. Kind of want it to be this year because it's a little easier to trade with, but whatever. 67 and 128, which is actually very generous. Thank you, fellas. <laughs> it's a next year fourth anyways, but still, it's kind of a win. We go to 75 to gain a fifth this year from the Rams, which is a little bit more kind of reasonable and realistic. Uh, the middle linebacker is not the biggest thing in the world because obviously he's 23, even though he's a one to two round projection. I was... W Are they all gone? No way, that's... An we did miss the middle linebacker, but it wasn't actually. I was like, what? Uh, excuse me. Uh, but I think Anthony Humphrey, who is the A finesse, is going to be worthy of our choice. Normal development trait, but that classic 85 speed, 90 excel. Nick Benito's hidden, or a star, but didn't play super, super well. So I figured best available pick, get that depth anyways. And he seemed okay. And I really want this Kevin Hankins guy because I think he's going to be decent, but... 
also likely going to be normal development rate. So, I mean, there's really no point in us trading up for a guy that we just don't need. But yeah, I want to look at him, that middle linebacker, the middle mountain linebacker we were looking at, and then the one that EA suggested to us, but he was a two to three, and he was also the same one to two projection or whatever. So, I was like, yeah, do I really care? Probably not. This wide receiver actually does look decent, even though he's uh, 23. I'm just going to grab him. Normal development rate, 88 speed, 91 excel, 6'4", 231. Probably going to put him at tight end 2, or tight end 3, if you will, since we have Alberto. I don't know how good this center is, but he looks decent enough to me. He's 22, and he's got pretty good strength. So, Bryson Saunders, normal development rate, sadly, but... Yeah, might be a decent overall. At this point, I'm just drafting more than trading now because I just feel like... Even though, like I said, the realism I want is kind of just value realism rather than, you know, caring too much about actually drafting. Because once again, we really don't need anything. But I do want to have at least a couple of draft picks so it doesn't seem like, you know, super unrealistic. We're going to have a third round full uh, DT anyways that probably sucks, if I'm going to be honest. His block shed was awful, but... Maybe his power move's decent. And a backup quarterback who's kind of trash. If you're 6'5 and your throw power is under 90, you're doing it wrong. Simply put. Let's take a look at the draft recap. Didn't really have too many high caliber picks. 69 overall, 67, 66, 59. <laughs> Pretty bad, but also didn't really have a high pick. But Humphrey he is very usable. This was our only like kind of legit pick. He will be our new, I think it's... Is it right end? I think it's right end. I mean, it won't be our new one, but it'll be our backup anyways. Let's take a look at the wide receiver just for the funds. Releases okay. Short routes okay. His catching's okay. His jumping sucks. Medium and deep sucks. He's awful. Center is a 66 overall, 22 years old. Uh, pretty awful. DT is 22 years old. Pretty awful. And then Finnegan, the quarterback, could be worse. But yeah, I'm going to be releasing Fulton straight up. He's just he's just trash. So not that it really matters too much, but I did have a center. And of course, he went literally like a couple picks before us. But normal to have absolutely nuts, though. Uh, and then in the third round, we missed out on two players, I think. Fowler was the uh, EA's prospect spotlight, who seems very good. 82 jumping is pretty nuts for a, a CPU-generated middle linebacker. 80 catching on top of it, very fast. Probably these. Wow. Okay. Well, even though he's 23, that would have absolutely been a great pick. And I will be honest with you. I was debating him. If he would have been there in the, the start of this pick, I would have possibly went for him. Oh, wait. No. Fowler isn't the one that EA said. This was exactly the guy we were going for. The guy that I'm thinking of was something else. What was his name? I think it was like Dante or something. Yeah, Dante Albert. Okay, now it makes more sense that that was EA. Never mind. Okay. Either way, though, we sold. I was like three to four. That's usually like pick 10 or so. Nope. Could have had an X factor to match up with the other good linebackers. Instead, we're stuck with uh, Tyndall. I mean, we've got Tyndall. I'm not stuck with him. All right, here's the squad. We've already kind of went into week one. I kind of forgot to mention. Uh, I forgot to show the, the roster. But the team's obviously looking great. Jamar Chase is... Kind of a freak, obviously. He's 90 overall. He's already amazing. Solid route running and everything. Uh, Claypool is obviously a great number two for us. We're going to try to get that route running up as much as physically possible. And as you can see, it's... I mean, he's, he's getting there, right? He's getting there. Short route. Medium route and deep route need to get going. But that's kind of what the AI loves to, to upgrade. So we'll be fine defensively, you know. Nothing too crazy, nothing different. All right, negotiations. Uh, it appears that it's all backups still, thankfully, but which of these backups do we want to keep? Caden Stearns, I think, is one of those long-term type of deals where you, know, you can keep him on a five-year, 14-year cooking. Anthony Schwartz, probably not someone we need, and we just paid Caden Stearns. So we're going to be losing a lot of good value backups, but obviously, as far as starters go, we're fine. A bit of a shaky season, but I think with a win, we'll be back in the playoffs, and we are. Of course, the Vikings go 10-7. and seven. We were 6-6. Six and six. I think they were 6-6, six and six, and we lost to them. I was like, no shots. We're going to miss the playoffs, help them get to the playoffs, and weaken our draft pick. But of course, turns out all right, because obviously we got rid of our own draft pick, for Jamar Chase, you know, two first rounds, whatever, uh, and we got back to the playoffs anyways and then we ended up with the minnesota vikings first round pick which seems to be a top 15 pick despite the fact that we paid like top the well bottom five pick value so 
Not a bad season. Let's see if we can actually finish it off, though, with an actual Super Bowl this time, as you know, we lost, unfortunately, by quite a bit, actually, despite the fact that we made that last second kind of comeback. They almost choked it away, but let's take a look at the numbers, see how we uh, did. Of course, even worse touchdowns for Joe Burrow this time. Rushing wasn't much better touchdown-wise, but Brees Hall did have a way better year, and he probably should be superstar. Wide receivers, Jamar Chase is the best. Claypool was down, Thornton was down, and Fant wasn't great. Really is this the Packers scheme. Maybe you need to change it to something else. Uh, sack totals away with 15. Nick Benito, 9 again. Jordan Davis, way better with 5.5. But Ed Oliver, way worse with 3. Interceptions, 2 for Kelvin Joseph. Kicking was pretty good for Sly. Punting was much better for Jack Fox. Kicking, you know, kick return, punt return stuff, pretty much the same. Overall, though, our ranking as an offense is better, it seems, which is nice. Uh, as far as, like, winning the quarterback award or anything like that, not going to happen. I mean, number six, just kind of by default at this rate. Wait, maybe he isn't going to go to Superstar. What the hell? Am I missing something? Was that not, like, a really good year? Touchdowns matter that much, I guess. Maybe there's some 20 touchdown guys. I'm not sure. But not seeing Evan Neal on the best lineman list yet either, which is a little surprising. No way at number four. Number nine. For Nick Benito, I'd imagine. DB, no kicking. Number three, less awards, even though I felt like we probably should have had more. Yeah, I mean, I suppose a lot of the players were really good in the league, so maybe not going to be... Uh... Wow, look how good Joe Mixon did. Six yards per carry with 24 touchdowns. Surprised it wasn't MVP. Yeah, maybe we aren't going to get a dev up because, I mean, even yards per carry-wise, he wasn't even near the top. But whether he does or not is kind of irrelevant as we are going to be going against the Giants in our first playoff game of this season. Beat them once. We're a way better team than last year, so why can't we do it again? Going to the end of the game, 7-0, 7 all. so we tie it up. They get another touchdown right back, though. Uh, we get another touchdown right back. Defense actually stops them. We're up by 3. We're going to be up by 3 at half, up by 10 now, near the end of the third, looking okay. Ooh, giving up a short field, giving him a touchdown on top of it, and that touchdown will seal the deal, uh, even though it's going to be a bit closer of a game than we would have hoped for. Macarrow really putting up a performance as Joe Burrow did not do so well, but of course we did have three rushing touchdowns, so that obviously uh, takes away from the quarterbacking. A.J. Brown was amazing for them, but we kind of had the same game for multiple players combined. Uh, sack totals, yikes. Andre James for them, kind of bad. Ed Oliver, Nick Benito away, pretty good numbers. Picks, Dante Jackson with one, and then Joey Sly, the postseason goat. Another juiced upgrade, a speed upgrade for a guy who now has 96 speed, like he's actually blazing. Here we go, the Saints this time, a new face in town, if you will. Uh, 90 overall, so they're 88. Ooh, that's pretty good. You know, you compare that to the Giants who had an 84, it's significant we obviously did see that their uh players some of them are a little on the older side but that's still kind of irrelevant as right now is you know the situation we're seeing ourselves in 14 to 3 14 to 6 in nala as well which is pretty impressive so far but just like that gotta take your opportunities and score touchdowns because just like that it's right back in it and more than just like that it's all tied up you're going to run it on second and 12, and then run it again. And then you miss... Okay. I mean, it's not really Joey Sly's fault, if you will, but at the same time, like, you kind of have to hit the field goal. Whether it's dumb for our whole play to just be to kick a field goal rather than just put up as many points as possible, you still got to hit the damn thing regardless as Noah Fant. I mean, why not try to make a play? I mean, it's your own eight-yard line, I guess, but... We have a pretty solid offensive line. You feel pretty comfortable behind it. You have a very solid quarterback who's going to hit his throws, and then you have great receivers that are going to win their routes. I mean, why wouldn't you at least, at the least, take your shot? Of course, did kind of make a bad throw there, but I did see Jamar Chase, but once again, I wanted that guaranteed first because not only does it continue the drive, but more importantly, if you don't get that, then that timeout looks really dumb, and you're actually giving them a chance with it last second, of course. Looking for something decent. I'm just going to take Taekwon. Uh-oh. Taekwon Doak. What a catch attempt, though. Got to give him some credit there. And we know Joe Burrow is a little lacking on the throw power, so we're going to try to run it, gain maybe like 5 to 10, and make it actually doable. 
as Brees Hall is going to get just about that, seven yards, chance for a Hail Mary. We've got the speed, but the question is, do we have the time to throw? And more importantly, does Joe Burrow have the ability to get this ball to the end zone? He does. It's going to get there. And Claypool dropped it. How is he so bad? Oh, my God. I just skipped it because I wanted to see heads. Why not? Nice, our ball. But I want to see the play back, dude. All they have to do to make the game more realistic and more fun in a situation like that is just make it where the DBs are constantly trying to swat in a spot like that. But if the ball is a, it's catchable, it should be caught. Simply put, a professional level wide receiver doesn't drop this, especially twice. He had it right here, misses it, double catches it. How are you dropping it? Like, come on, EA. Explain this. Like, that's just, like, why? But regardless, we're in overtime with ball start. You know, not bad. Oh, wow, we just kind of kind of forgot. <laughs> you can't do that. Oh, I want to come in. They could go for the field goal, but they're like, you know what? 60-yarder, that's that's a lot to ask for. Going to go with Ed Oliver. It's Carson Wentz giving us troubles. Love it. Ed Oliver is causing problems. And what a catch by, is that Valus Jones? I mean, it was a 50-50 ball. It could have been dropped. Instead, it's either going to be another overtime or they're going to win this. It's looking good for them. I'm just saying. Look at how close this game is, though. Like, you never see the AI take this long to score when they're inside the 10. But, of course, they are here just to make it dramatic. Free rush and touchdown, Saints. We lose in the divisional because Claypool can't catch for crap. Oh, man. I mean, at least we're still competing every year in the playoffs. Of course, we allowed 2.8 yards per carry to their starting running back, and we still lost. Like, if you can lock up the run game that hard, like, you should not have any troubles winning. Of course, Joey Sly with the chip shot miss. It is the Seahawks versus the Raiders in the Super Bowl, of course. The winner is the Raiders AFC taking back-to-back -back Super Bowls. Let's take a look at our dev ups, which did not include Brees. Uh, love that. That's great. Defensively, uh, no away, but we did get a dev up for Nick Benito and the linebacker Tyndall, but... Man, that's kind of an L that we didn't get an upgrade in dev for Brees Hall. Pretty sure we did get rid of, uh, you know, the players we wanted to and kept the ones we wanted. You know, Anthony Schwartz, you're a fast guy and he's great and all that, but there's so many backups that the AI signs 24-7 that we just don't need him. Once again, in the user class, there's zero shot to let him go, but, you know, in our user franchise when you're actually using him, but... We're literally not using them, and it's a rebuild, so. Re, uh, you know, free agency, a bunch of kickers, punters, fullbacks, a couple of running backs, maybe a corner or two, but no one young and really, like, usable long-term, so. Uh, Quez, actually, that's a guy that does go to free agency a lot. He is a name and a half, but we do not need him. We literally have him with Taekwon, but he's freaking taller and younger. But honestly, with Nick Benito having back-to-back nine-sack performances, going to superstar dev... I'm not really sure what we need to grab anymore. Uh, you know, that was going to be my number one position here with this decent first-round pick we're likely to have. Uh, I mean, like, what do you what do you grab? Like, you, you just don't need anything. If there's a sick linebacker, maybe. But Tyndall's, I mean, he's getting there. His coverage does suck, in fairness. So, we'll look at linebacker, but do you really grab a first-round linebacker? I don't, I don't think you do, honestly. I just don't. So... What do you actually do here as we're already developing a pretty damn good team? Now, I don't know how much I'm willing to go for a middle linebacker, but there is this guy who has a huge frame, and he's pretty athletic, I guess. I mean, he's got, like, a bunch of redeeming factors, redeeming qualities, uh, but do I really want him that bad that I'd either A, take him at 12, or B, even make a trade-up? Because, I mean, he might not even be there if he's round one, so... I think at this point, I don't need anyone that bad that I'd be willing to trade up for them. So if he's there at 12, I'd debate taking him, but I'm definitely not trading up for him. As Jacksonville had a chance, did not take him. What do we do? Like, I don't need anything. Like, like he's, you know, like, what do we do? This guy's obviously way more raw, but he's still, you know, three to four, day three. So it's like, not the biggest deal. We have no one else, though. Tullock's literally just their projected guy, so I guess with all of the ratings he has, I'm gonna grab him. JJ Carroll 
He is hidden. Change direction is rough. Speed excels decent. Jumping's actually pretty good, especially for his 6'4", 237 frame. Giving us kind of Quay Walker vibes, ironically enough. And a lot of our day threes are gone. We also scouted this wide receiver a little bit more further. Release sucks. Catching sucks. But he's got an A deep route, and he is blazing fast. But he is 23 years old, so, I mean, if he's there, maybe we'll take him. But I'm not really pushed on it. So we have this late third and then an early fourth. I don't know, once again, how many people are going to be here left. The center, I think, is the clear-cut best choice as he's probably hidden. It's like there's a bunch of C's and B's in there. It's usually all that matters as long as there's not too many D's or F's. James Boyd, not hidden, actually, but still could be decent. And then our next pick, we have uh, an okay-looking safety, so I might as well take him just as a backup. Clint Singleton, normal dev, uh, about as fast as I thought. Maybe we got lucky with like an 88-89 speeder. Really thought he was going to be hidden, though, but just wasn't. And then, yeah, that wide receiver is decent, but it is what it is, you know. We'll check if he's there just in case, but... Probably will be gone, especially since he was a 2-3. to three. Oh, he's actually here still. Obviously, I'm going to take him. Welcome to the team, Ben Derby. A little slower than I would have thought, but also probably like, you know, 70 overall or something like that, which isn't bad for a late fourth. We're also going to trade. I mean, we don't really need much more, so I'm going to trade these two picks off for something. I'm not sure what, but something. The Browns were the first pick overall, so I'm going to give them two fifths and a six for their fourth next year. This guy looks weird. And I like weird. So, Von Hobson, welcome. 84 strength. I thought maybe, you know, if he was hidden development trade for some reason, you know, that's all it takes as an offensive lineman. If he was star or superstar, it don't matter how bad you are. And I guess I'm going to grab this fullback just because he's kind of fast. He has, you know, 4, 6, 9, maybe like 82, 83 speed, whatever. Uh, 80 speed. Yikes. All right, let's take a look at our guy. Obviously, uh, he was pretty good projected. Wow, 77 overall. The safety's even decent, but... He was, you know, highly projected, highly, highly sought after, looked good. Uh, coverage does kind of suck like the guy we already have on our team, but still decent looking. Hit power is a little bad, so if he's star, this is honestly kind of a, a mini L. But so far, so good, and super star dev. Okay, so that's a good pick. Um, he was going to start regardless, I imagine, but I don't know what we do with uh, Tyndall now. Just trade him off, I guess, but... 78 overall, literally higher than Tyndall already. Ian Superstar, of course, Singleton, just a backup regardless. And then Derby was a 69 overall, so not quite 70, but close. Not bad, but not great. It's probably just going to be a, a good kicker turner for us, I guess. And that left tackle was awful. I'm going to just release him real quick. Useless. Here we are with a new roster. Not really new, not really even improved, but I suppose every season we go on, we get better because we are that Young and good of a squad, obviously, defensively. Uh, you know, the team is looking as follows. Carroll does, you know, he's kind of a beast in fairness, but still. Uh, yeah, I mean, we maybe should have been able to win a Super Bowl by now. Uh, maybe not even this season, but maybe by next season we'll be absolutely goaded. As, once again, you know, we do have a bunch of mid-80s that will probably be near 90 by the end of the season. So, for the re-signings, we have a bit more than I would have thought. Once again, a lot of these guys did develop from the ground up. Troy Anderson thinking he's a pass rusher, but of course he is an absolute freak. Insane block shed. Coverage is good enough. Catching sucks, but insanely speedly. And you know what? Even though it's not intended for him to be paid this much, considering how much of like a freak he is, 6'4", 243 with that kind of speed, that block shed and all that, I'm just going to give him the contract. I'm not even going to, like, fight it. Seven-year deal for Salier. My, why not? Just lock up the line. Kenneth Walker. Um, I don't even know how well he's playing. Running backs are a dime a dozen. We will see a ton of talented running backs this season. But how well is he playing? I mean, it's just so dumb because, like, I get it, right? He's a backup. They don't want the numbers to look too good for the backups. But, like... 92 speed, 90 trucking, you're, you're going to give him a 3.2 yards per carry average. Also, somebody give him a new number, but I'm just going to pay him the minimum deal, which is pretty cheap, actually, and also change his number. And then for Cam Jurgens, I'm actually going to give him a lesser deal, I think, because he's actually pretty trash, to be honest. He's really not that great. I know 
we do want to go for the the power stuff anyways but it'd be nice to get some of the other blocking stuff as well uh, cushion berry is a little bit older but he is a little bit more balanced not much more so uh, just like him i'm gonna try to give him the minimum deal which i mean i don't know i normally try to go as you know cheap as possible long term but linemen are not the toughest position to draft uh, Tyquan thornton it's pretty cheap money so five year 33 which i mean it's not cheap but you know what i mean uh, for Madden, obviously. Tyndall, uh, is he the backup? I don't know if we can still trade him. I, I'm, I'm not sure. I think he was the backup, right? Give Kelvin Joseph a five-year 25. I'm trying to get a cheaper deal for Tyndall so I could just use him to be traded, but I might end up just paying him backup money just to once again be a backup. I'd be shocked if we made the playoffs. I'd be shocked, and yeah, we didn't. We had a an awful losing streak, which was just laughably bad. I mean, it's just so stupid a team like this could lose this many games. We lost six games out of seven as the highest rated team in the league. I, I can't even confirm that. I mean, I could. I, I haven't confirmed that, but it's pretty safe to say when every single time I look at the teams, they're like five or six overalls less than us. And you got to remember, that's with a bad performance. Of course, we're going to have to change the playbook because it's just not working out. It's just simply not working out. This is a talented team that just isn't getting the job done with the current situation we're seeing, despite the fact that we have so many great players. Away and Benito, not bad, actually. Maybe you get to X-Factor and Oliver, not terrible. Jordan Davis, pretty terrible, to be fair. Interceptions. Kind of tame, but we had a bunch of different people with interceptions. Sly was awful. Maybe even have has costed us a couple of games. It's pretty safe to say when you miss, what, six field goals out of 22, which is quite high, to be honest. Jack Fox, pretty good punts per, uh, well, average per punt. <laughs> punts per average, I'm yeah, sure. But we did go 9-8, and eight, so I'm kind of wondering if the defense was decent. Yeah, it was, okay. Because offense looked pretty trash, ain't going to lie. Can't imagine we would have had any awards. Maybe, like, something I'm just not thinking of. O-line, no. Yeah, I mean, it was a pretty bad season. The fact that we even went positive is pretty shocking. Because, like I said, six losses out of seven games is is pretty bad. Very unprecedented for a team that's good as well. Of course, Detroit is in the Super Bowl. Once again, it's a fantasy, but still. You know, how... how how far of a fantasy are we looking at here? I'm sorry. DevOps, Joe Burrow is still going to be star. It's going to be pain. Uh, didn't expect anyone on offense, to be honest. Defensively, a bunch of DevOps. We had... Uh, Carroll was a superstar, right? For some reason, I thought he was an X-Factor. I think it was because we missed out on an X-Factor. Uh, but Benito goes to X-Factor. I don't know when he's going to need a contract. It might actually be this season. So once again, he would have been a, a little bit later. Away would have been you know a bit higher of a pick. Uh, and that's pretty much it for DevOps, but, uh, oh yeah, Troy Anderson, who we just paid, uh, you know, like a six-year, 80-something million dollar deal, which I suppose at least it's worth it. You know, he's going to be here for that whole contract and at a very high level, but man, what a disappointing season. Uh, are we actually running Green Bay's playbook? Maybe I switched it for one of the weeks for some sort of scenario and just forgot to change it, which I don't know if I would have changed it for something, it would have been like the Chiefs offense or something, right? Yeah, I mean, we just suck. Maybe the coaching staff needs to go. Well, let's let's change the coaching staff because it would be like three, four coaching, right? So let's let's get rid of some coaches here. Once again, I don't know if we've ever done an experiment on this. Maybe we should check. I, I don't know, but uh, we definitely want to try to get a four-three coach if we can. We're getting Zach Taylor, baby. Oh my God! With this game, twice it just failed. What is wrong with this game? Of course, we're letting Tariq Willen and Wolin go as well in this. Um, I wouldn't be letting them in a main go, but we already have so many good corners. Didn't we pay Kalen Barnes, Alberto? Same situation. Don't really need a tight end anymore. At least number two or three. Game won't let me hire any defensive coordinators. I guess we're not playing defense this year. I, I guess we're just gonna forget that aspect. Honest to God. Just give Burger King the freaking exclusive rights. At least Pocket Bike Racer was halfway decent. Jesus. Of course, we did talk about how there probably would be a lot of decent running backs in here if we were to let Walker go, and we weren't wrong. I mean, those like pretty much all the rookie running backs from the class are here. Uh, there's some pretty damn good talented players here, obviously. Isaiah Spiller. The thing is, though, uh, 
you'd be paying the same price anyways, as you can see, so I suppose we'll keep the guy that's been here for a while and just deal with it. Traylon Burks is a free agent, though. Like, I don't think we need him, but... A little bit of a head-scratcher that Sky Moore, Wandale Robinson, and Traylon Burks are here. I, I just don't understand that, but do what you gotta do, I guess. So still not quite, like, a bunch of talent, but if you needed certain positions, you could definitely land a couple of starters... Unfortunately, or fortunately, we are not a team that needs any position, really. We're just goaded. We just can't win games somehow. Well, we need one position. We need a defensive coordinator. That way we just uh, we can't get because the game's uh, stupid. Let me just try to like sign someone that has... Wait, to be fair, it is kind of like questionable that it's like it shows a bunch of Green Bay. Yeah, none of these guys. Maybe, it, maybe the game is just busted. Let's see. Um, let's go with Aaron Kaiser, maybe. Yeah, maybe the game is glitch. It does say that. Either way, it's still on them. But it's like saying that these, they're, they're Packer players. Let's try to fire him. Sorry, dude. He's like, yes, we don't have to sell the house. Thank God. And then, you know, you get the call that it was a mistake. My bad. And yeah, I, I guess we'll we'll go back and get him. He, can, he doesn't have to sell the house after all. I honestly have no idea what to draft i just don't think we need anything that's like the one bad thing about doing a fantasy is that like you end up with so many good young developable players that like you don't have room to really develop anyone else right so like what do you actually draft here i i don't think there's anything i think i'll look see if there's some clear-cut gods at any position at all and if not i'm just gonna trade for the future like honestly even when it comes down to like Trading our draft picks for proven talent. I, I can't even think of a position to, to replace. Maybe strong safety? Even though I like Nick Cross a lot. Maybe he's backup. I don't know. I just... Yeah, I'm going to actually look for a, a solid six strong safety that doesn't need to be paid. That's like semi-decently young if there is one. And I guess go that route. I, I really don't know what else I could do here. Ooh, Kyle Hamilton could be fun. All right, pick 17, a fourth-round pick, and a sixth-round pick next year for Kyle Hamilton. Once again, I don't know what else we could do, so I uh, just did it. All right, we have a second-round pick, pick 17. I would imagine our DT is here. He is. Bernie Hill, A, power move, B, finesse, B, block shed. Once again, it's not a position we absolutely need, but I did mention if I was going to draft anyone, it would be absolute beast. This guy looks like an absolute beast. We're going to grab him. And actually shockingly hidden. That is very surprising. I did admit to myself uh, that I thought he was going to be normal dev. I mean, the way he was built, a power move and all that, he just seemed like a guy that you could easily develop. And they said, yeah, he is. Maybe too easy to develop. As they're going to make him hidden development trade, of course. I'd imagine Star. I'm not really sure. Oh, Sexton right before us. We probably didn't need him, you know. But it was still nice to see. It was a 3-4 to four with a 1-2 to two grade as far as uh, talent. Kirkpatrick obviously is going to be our choice, though, with how good he looks. Hit and development rate, no shocker there. And then in the fourth round, we had a tackle, but he's also a day three. He could be, you know, there till the seventh round. He could be literally gone right now i'd probably say he's either gone or about to be gone and yeah he is out of here we had another guy that's like projected high but i mean an f zone coverage i'm not really sure how you work out with an f zone coverage overton on the other hand is a d zone coverage so i'll take a shot on him why not 84 speed was he not 462 that's what 84 speed looks like i yeah i guess so I'd probably give him like 85, so, you know, not really much of a difference. And then for the rest of the picks, I'm just going to trade him down for next year. You know, we got the best player of the draft, pre-draft, being uh, Kyle Hamilton, of course, which is a pretty big upgrade. You know, Nick Cross has that potential with that speed, but at the same time, he has developed really slowly, I can't lie. So, at the same time, with his 81 zone coverage after playing for three seasons now, it's nice to have a guy that's physically proven with Kyle Hamilton. But let's take a look at our overalls here. What kind of talent do we get? 74 overall, 70 and 68. Bernie Hill at ET with 80 power move, uh, a 75 block shed. You know, we, we knew about the 80 speed, 90 strength, which is really, really solid for a DT. Probably should have been even faster, you know, if we compare 
four six two was eighty four speed. Four six eight or four six seven was eighty speed. That doesn't really match up too well. Star Dev, like we said, we kind of figured that. Uh, and then Kirk Patrick would probably be our new left guard at some point. Is I think Cam Jurgens is probably our worst player on the offensive line besides uh, Cushenberry. So it's one of the two, center or left guard. But with uh, decent athleticism, center, you know, probably a little bit of a waste at six foot five. All right, season four, we're going to be rocking Tampa's playbook because, I mean, clearly Green Bay's isn't working. I don't know if it's the actual, like, formation or whatever, but uh, the playbook's just not working out. We have so much talent, just you know, just like that, saying it just like that, yet we aren't even making the playoffs consistently. I mean, we obviously know the game is pretty damn awful, but regardless, we should still be making the playoffs. Kyle Hamilton's a new upgrade, a big upgrade nine overalls which is pretty huge every player is either already an 85 overall or will be an 85 plus overall uh, so i mean this has got to be our year or i don't really know how it's not to be once again we're literally five overalls up on every team probably more on most of them we have some more contracts to pay out Brees hall uh, has been pretty decent, actually, especially for a like non-already established running back. At this point, I'm just going to pay him what they're you know owed. Because once again, this is a different scenario where you know everyone was a free agent technically, and then they got drafted basically. So away, that's a pretty huge steal, to be honest. Noah Fant, I don't really want to do a five-year format star, but I'm going to have to. Uh, Chase Claypool, uh, four-year fifty-seven. Why the f not? take that contract what else do we have uh, merrig man i was hoping someone was going to be on the cheaper side i guess not uh nick benito he's actually kind of expensive considering he's literally like oa's price despite the fact that you know he's a different position technically he's the opposite side usually it's you know they're not always the same yeah we're kind of broke um caleb farley i guess a five-year deal somebody we're not going to be able to afford Ragnar is definitely gone sadly but He's, he's got to go. He's got to go, unfortunately. Uh, I'm actually going to back out just so I know exactly who I have left. A nice little refresh on the screen. So Christian Harris, linebacker, has been kind of a dime a dozen, but he is really good. It's very hard to pass on him, but yeah, whatever. I'll pay him. I'll pay him. Uh, so we're going to have to replace Ragnow. And that's actually kind of it, because once again, we already have a replacement for Nick Cross. But a four-year 20 for a guy with his speed is so hard to pass on. But we're going to, just for this sake, uh, you know, it is what it is. We were seemingly having a better season the last year, but I think the main importance is that the rest of the division was awful, so it really didn't matter. Uh, Chicago decided to turn around a little bit. Joe Burrow, number one in the league after changing. We changed to the Tampa playbook with spread offense we normally like would do vertical zone with tampa so we have learned that that is pretty busted uh let's take a look at the stats and awards seeing a couple of our guys actually on the list burrow is a superstar Brees hall could be a superstar that's a lot of touchdowns jamar chase could be an x factor uh thornton maybe a star dev claypool probably not a dev up no fan not bad actually blocking okay right it's not terrible uh, Nick Benito, 17 sacks, 11 for Oliver, and then OA gets 9 after uh, getting paid, which is kind of annoying. Uh, but picks, pretty tame stuff. Uh, you know, a couple of guys, you know, 3, 4. Kyle Hamilton involving himself. Joey Sly, way better season. Jack Fox down a little bit, but still pretty good. Kick return, punt return, not much to show for. Uh, number 1 in offensive yardage, going from what, 21, 23, somewhere around that range. Defensive yards did go from 4 to 13, but still, that's obviously a much better season. Second in points scored, and then fifth in allowed. You can see why we were one of the best teams in the league. That's just, you know, really good combination. Sixth for Joe Burrow. Any award wins in all, I would have thought someone. Jamar Chase, Frank Ragnow, Nick Benito. Not bad. We got some awards on top of it, and this could be our year. Once again, no bye week, which really sucks, but... As far as talent, as far as playbooks, all that, scheme, everything, we are easily the best team in the league. So let's show it for once, maybe. Going to the end of the game, Chicago moving down but cannot score. We get a score 7-0. to zero. 
Still 7-0, 7-3, 10-3, 10-6, 13-6, 14-6, 15-6, 16-6, 17-6, 18-6, 19-6, 20-6, 21-6, 22-6, 23-6, 24-6, 25-6, 26-6, 27-6, 28-6, 29-6, 30-6, 31-6, 32-6, 33-6, 34-6, 35-6, 36-6, 37-6, 38-6, 39-6, 40-6, 41-6, 42-6, 43-6, 44-6, 45-6, 46-6, 47-6, 48-6, 49-6, 50-6, 51-6, 52-6, 53-6, 54-6, 55-6, 56-6, 57-6, 58-6, 59-6, 60-6, 61-6, 62-6, 63-6, 64-6, 65-6, 66-6, 67-6, 66-6, 67-6, 66-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-6, 67-
Of course, leading by four, leading by 11 now. Only leading by three after the touchdown of the two-point. Defense does its part. Offense was consistent. And despite that score right at the end, we will still win the game and go to the Super Bowl. Taking a look at this monster matchup. You can see both teams throwing quite wildly. Almost 800 yards with six touchdowns passing. Uh, Brees Hall was the only decent running back of the day. Uh, receiving, Noah Fan had a couple of touchdowns. Claypool was really good, almost 200 yards receiving. Uh, let's take a look at defensively. Pretty tame. I mean, a couple of numbers here and there. Kalen Barnes with an interception. Of course, Joey Slide did not miss this time. Boswell did, which, I mean, considering they were literally would have been down by one possession if he hit that field goal. I don't know when that happened. Maybe it played a big factor. Maybe it was a, a huge momentum thing, but, you know, morale as well, I suppose. But doesn't matter because it's it's over. Super Bowl against the Titans. Let's take a look at if we had any dev ups. Joe Burrow for sure, but anyone else? Brees Hall also went to superstar. Not bad. What is his abilities though? He has balance beam and evasive. Evasive is pretty busted. Joe Burrow, quick draw and conductor. Conductor, we have a problem. Joe Burrow might as well go strong arm. I don't even know what he looks like these days, but. We're going to wait. Ooh, a nice throw power. Uh, we're going to wait just because, I mean, after this game, if we win, we'll have to look at the roster anyways. So you might as well wait. Uh, assuming we win, and maybe we, we lose, and then we lose again next season. I rage quit. We never see them. But hopefully that doesn't happen. Uh, Caleb Varley, of course, slot upgrade. What was he good in main coverage early? Oh, speed. 97-97. Wow. Yeah, slot upgrades are pretty good. But screw 10 overalls higher. We're 11 overalls higher now. I mean, you can argue uh, Jamar Chase and and Kyle Hamilton, but we could have made draft picks that were just as good anyways. Hell, developing Tyquan Thornton could have been juiced. Of course, he's a huge, tall, fast guy. Maybe not huge, but he's, he's tall and he's fast, so he could have definitely developed. 21-10 to 10, looking pretty good so far. 21-13, to 13, nice little field goal for them before half. We're now up by 11, and a touchdown there will end the game. It's just way too high of a, a point deficit to come back from, especially with a long drive like that. And the team will win the Super Bowl 34-20. to Joe Burrow running quickly, and it's so funny how, uh, you know, they, they spent, I don't know how much time, but it was such a big emphasis for them to update the Super Bowl celebration, yet... They literally had that oversight of Joe Burrow or the quarterback running onto the field and like kind of like celebrating. And then the next thing is him kind of on the sideline with his head on hand on his head. I mean, and like on his heads. Okay. Um, his hands on his head. Unless they have like some bipolar moment, they'd either still be running around, they'd be like hugging someone. They wouldn't be running sideline and then putting their head, you know, hands on their head. I almost put heads on. Jesus. You know, they wouldn't be doing that. They, <laughs> It's just not it's so stupid, dude. How are you going to freaking have a new Super Bowl celebration that is literally broken? It's it's dumb, dude. Oversight and a half. Eh, it's just so stupid. But regardless, that's what the game looked like. Nothing crazy, right? I mean, no interceptions or anything like that. Just a pretty tame Super Bowl of us scoring more than them, I guess. But... Let's take a look at the team. Brees Hall, of course, really just an elusive back. Got a little bit of trucking. I mean, he's so fast. But, yeah, he is pretty busted, especially when you consider the fact that he has uh, evasive. Of course, max security for Jamar Chase. Didn't even have a second ability, but very good catching. Short route actually is pretty trash, but everything else is amazing. Obviously, 96 speed is crazy. Let's take a look at Joe Burrow in a second. Chase Claypool. Uh, you know, a little bit better in the short route. Very good catching as well. So a little bit of a different type of guy in a kind of a jump ball situation player. You know, corner fade in the red zone. Uh, Thornton, insane deep ball with super speed. So got a bunch of different types of receivers on the team. Joe Burrow. Let's see it. 90 throw power starts with, what, 87, I think. d backers 92. Very solid, obviously. Play action and break sack could be better. But other than play action, you don't really care about break sack too much. Uh, O-line, I don't know if it really matters too much, but let's take a look. Evan Neal, uh, finesse kind of sucks, which is kind of dumb because he's an edge uh, protector. Still pretty good stuff. We would definitely like to see the pass blocking up a little bit as well, but what are his abilities anyways? Puller Elite and then 
This one, you could probably do something like Edge Protector, which would be busted, but it would be fair, because that's literally what his job role is. Uh, Salyer, power blocking. Once again, you would like more balance, and his pass blocking in general is pretty bad, but he's an interior guy, so I suppose if you're going to block anything, want the power moves, because you're going to be going against those power defenders more often than not. Of course, I'm not sure why his lead block's good when he's a center, and he's also not very fast. Cam Jurgens, I think it's probably safe to say that Cushenberry is worse than him. Frank Ragnar needs that contract. We could afford it, but we just aren't going to. He puts up like nine sacks allowed a season, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, Christian Harris, we just seen recently enough because we obviously had to look at him to re-sign him. Very talented player. Let's take a look at Troy Anderson, who is absolutely busted how good he is. I mean, 93 speed, 93 excel, 93 block shedding. 76 zone coverage, man, kind of sucks, but just a freak. Then we have Carroll, who's kind of the newer guy on scene. 88 speed, 87 excel, kind of built similar to Troy Anderson, just a lot slower. Uh, Trayvon Merrick, of course, Nick Cross kind of, uh, you know, didn't really develop super fast. Trayvon is obviously really solid. We just got Kyle Hamilton, but in case you wanted to see his ratings, insane zone coverage. Okay speed, very smart, obviously. Player Rex a little bad, actually, but outside of that, very solid. We just seen Caleb Farley, but a refresher for how fast he is, which is just absurd. Let's take a look at Marlon Humphrey, who is obviously a very good player. 94 speed, which is a little bit faster than normal. I usually only see him at 92, 93 speed, but 99 man, 93 zone, really good play rec, press, tackle. I mean, everything's just great. Uh, Nick Benito, 95 overall. These two actually developed really well together. Him in a way, which we'll show right now. Uh, block shedding, kind of bad on both sides, but super fast. Great at their pass rush style. Also, Ed Oliver just got to superstar development trade. Of course, a block shedder, which specifically for his build, you'd probably want power move more. But let's take a look at Jordan Davis now, who has 81 power move, but also a block shedder. So... Running against this team shouldn't be very viable, especially with the linebackers having good block shed as well. Uh, Joey Sly, even with like 160 kicking, uh, you know, not kicking accuracy, uh, kicker XP, didn't really develop too well. Uh, Jack Fox, on the other hand, a bit better. Kick power didn't really seem like it went up that much, but good player nonetheless. And that is going to be it for our rebuild of our perfect fantasy draft guide team. If you guys enjoyed this one, maybe leave a like. Maybe subscribe if you're new. If you're not new, I really appreciate your continued support. Do a ton of franchise stuff. And even though we, are once again, are in the quote-unquote off-season of Madden, I still do enjoy Madden. It's just a weird sickness I have, I think. But, uh, you know, hopefully you guys are still enjoying as well. I need a drink of water badly, but we're going to get through this damn outro anyways. No video tomorrow. We'll have two on Saturday. And then I don't know what type of yet but most likely rebuild again on sunday and that's gonna be it maybe a second channel video on friday i'm not really sure actually but we'll see hope you guys come back for next video but until next video see ya